the adjusting process. The nature of the adjusting process is basically to enter adjusting entries that apply to different theories that we use in accounting. The accounting period concept requires that revenues and expenses be reported to the proper period, meaning that we will only apply revenues expenses in the period that they were actually earned and spent, not a month before, not a month after. Under the accrual basis of accounting, revenues are reported on the income statement in the period in which they are earned, basically stating that in the accrual basis of accounting, regardless if the cash is in hand, once we initiate the journal entry that bills the customer for the services completed, which is a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to revenues, we automatically report that income and that revenue on the income statement. The accounting concept supporting the reporting of revenues when they are earned regardless of when cash is received is called the revenue recognition concept. The accounting concept supporting revenues and related expenses in the same period is called the matching concept or matching principle. Now, on the other hand, under the cash basis of accounting, revenues and expenses are reported on the income statement in the period in which the cash is received or paid, meaning that when we record the journal entry to bill the customer a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to revenues, we do not actually report the revenue until the cash is received under the cash basis of accounting. Under the accrual basis, some of the accounts need updating at the end of the accounting period for the following reasons. Some expenses are not recorded daily, like utilities and rent, um, things like that. We have to do, sometimes we have to do some updating for certain things, accrued wages and, and different items. Some revenues and expenses are incurred as time passes rather than as separate transactions. Some revenues and expenses may be unrecorded altogether. The analysis and updating of accounts at the end of the period before the financial statements are prepared is called the adjusting process. The journal entries that bring the accounts up to date at the end of the accounting period are called the adjusting entries. Let's look at some examples of some accounts that require adjusting. Cash does not require adjusting. Prepaid rent, we need to adjust prepaid rent from month to month, especially if we pay our rent a year in advance or six months in advance. Instead of recording the rent as an expense all in one month, we record it as a prepaid asset, and then each month we convert the asset over to the expense for the monthly rent so that we show the expense for the month that it actually belongs in. Wages expense needs to be adjusted, especially if there are accrued wages. Office equipment does not need to be adjusted. Accounts receivable will need to be adjusted, especially if people have paid or if we need to continue to bill somebody for work that we have done. And unearned rent needs to be adjusted from month to month or from time to time, especially if you're doing monthly work for somebody who has prepaid you in advance. The types of accounts requiring adjustment are prepaid expenses. This is the advance payment of future expenses and are recorded as assets when cash is paid. Some examples of this would be prepaid rent, prepaid insurance. Once the asset has been used, it is converted to an expense. And again, examples would be prepaid insurance and prepaid rent. So let's look at an example of this journal entry. To adjust the account, or actually to pay for the account once we give it to go ahead and do the advance payment of it we will debit prepaid expense and credit the cash account to show that we paid for it. Now this sits in an asset account, this is an asset for an asset. Now once we have used a certain amount of this or time has passed and the month has passed up what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this account and to adjust it we will debit the expense account associated and we will credit the prepaid expense account to reduce that particular account to convert it over to an expense. Notice that I am not using cash in the adjusting entry. 
Cash is only handled in the original entry when you paid for the prepaid expense. Cash has nothing to do with the adjustment process. So to adjust the prepaid expense, we will debit the expense account and credit the prepaid expense account. Unearned revenues are the advanced receipt of future revenues and are recorded as liabilities when cash is received. I want to give you some real world examples of what unearned revenue could actually be. If you are a property manager and you're renting out apartments or homes, somebody could prepay their rent to you, so that would be unearned rent another, or unearned revenue. Now, there's another example, a very good example. It would be the lawyer situation. Anytime we go to a lawyer, we have to do, we have to pay what's called a retainer fee. That retainer fee cannot be spent, it can't be used by the lawyer until the lawyer actually does work for you. That is another very good example of earn earned revenue. Now, when we receive it, the unearned revenue, we're going to debit cash and credit the unearned revenue account. Unearned revenue is a liability account, by the way. Once the time has passed or we have done the work to earn the money, to adjust the unearned revenues account, we will debit unearned revenue and credit the revenue account that is associated. So in this particular adjusting entry, we are converting a liability to a revenue. Unearned revenue is the liability, revenue account is the revenue account. Again, notice that we are not using cash in the adjusting entry. Now there's accrued revenues and they go unrecorded because we've done some work but we haven't received any cash for it. So what we need to do is think of this on the idea that while you're actually doing the work for the customer, you're not going to send them a bill daily. What you're going to do is wait until you finish the work and then bill them when you're done. Now, the actual adjustment for accrued revenues is debiting the asset, which nine times out of 10 will be the receivable, and creating the revenue account. This adjusting entry for accrued revenues looks very familiar to you because you've already used this particular entry just to record billing a customer or sending a bill to a customer. So accrued revenues, anytime you're told to accrue revenues, you will debit accounts receivable and credit the revenue account. Accrued expenses go unrecorded because while we're incurring the expense, we're not getting a bill. Think of this on the idea of your utility bill and the, the power bill. While the meter's spinning throughout the month, all it's doing is collecting data and then somebody comes out, reads the meter, sends the information back to the home office and the home office generates a bill. This is what an accrued expense is. So it goes unrecorded until you actually receive the bill. And once you receive the bill, you then want to record the accrued expense to be paid at a later date. So we will debit the expense account and we will credit the payable account which is the liability account. And this is the actual adjusting entry, a debit to the expense account, a credit to the payable account. This will leave the bill later to be paid at a later date. 